If you haven't been keeping up with the latest drama surrounding Elon Musk's brain implant company Neuralink, let me catch you up. So back in January, they implanted their first device into a human volunteer named Noland. This device, called the N1 implant, is supposed to record brain activity using tiny, super-thin threads. They made a big deal about how flexible these threads were, saying it would minimize damage. Fast forward to March, they were showing off Noland playing video games using just his mind. Pretty wild stuff, right? But then, things took a turn. In May, Neuralink quietly dropped a blog post admitting that some of those threads had actually moved around in Noland's brain. They said it was no biggie, they fixed it with a software update and Noland was fine, but of course, the media started digging. The Wall Street Journal questioned how reliable this thing even is, and other experts started chiming in about the importance of making sure brain implants are built to last. Then, readers dropped a bombshell report saying that Neuralink had known about this issue for years even during animal testing. Apparently, it was even a reason why the FDA initially said no to their human trials. More reports came out saying that most of the threads had moved, but somehow, the FDA still gave Neuralink the okay to start recruiting their next patient. Noland himself even spoke out saying he had no idea this could happen, and that it wasn't something they saw in animal trials. So, yeah, it's been a bit of a roller coaster. Now, no one's expecting Elon Musk and Neuralink to suddenly change their ways. He's not exactly known for playing nice with the media or government, and he definitely likes to control the story. But even Neuralink showed a little bit of willingness to address the criticism in their blog post. Personally, I thought that blog post was a decent start. It was straightforward and offered a practical solution to the problem. But the problem is, brain implants aren't just machines. They're going into people's heads and that's a whole different ball game. So, here's what I want to know. What else did they learn from this whole situation? What are they going to change to make future trials safer? Are they actually going to be more open and transparent like they say they are? So far, they haven't really answered those questions. Instead, they're focusing on getting more people signed up for their trials and talking up their other projects. It's a classic distraction tactic. But hey, it's still early days. Maybe they'll surprise us and actually address these issues head on. We'll just have to keep an eye on them. Now here's the thing, Nolan clearly didn't know that these threads could move around, but Neuralink did. We don't know exactly what they told him before the surgery, but it seems like this risk wasn't made clear enough. So, what can we do about this kind of situation? People signing up for these trials are basically guinea pigs. No one's done this before, so they don't know what to expect. There's this thing called informed consent, which means participants need to be told about any possible risks, but that's not always happening. It's a big problem, way bigger than just Neuralink. Informed consent has been a mess for ages. The paperwork is too complicated, and it doesn't really help people understand what they're getting into. What's worse is that informed consent isn't even handled by the FDA, the guys who approve drugs and medical devices. It's a whole other government office, and they don't always do a great job. There's this crazy story about a hospital where they were doing sketchy brain biopsies and the FDA was warning everyone, but this office just ignored them. So yeah, it's a real issue that needs to be fixed, especially as more and more people sign up for brain implant trials. Looking ahead as more companies get into the brain implant game, each with their own unique designs and procedures, this issue of informed consent is only going to get bigger. We need to make sure people understand exactly what they're signing up for when it comes to these experimental brain implants. It's about protecting their freedom, their sense of self, and their very minds. The solution isn't rocket science, use plain language, create new ways to explain the risks, and give people a chance to ask questions. This shouldn't be something you need a lawyer to figure out. It's not just about Neuralink, it's about the entire industry. Sure, people aren't going into these trials completely blind, but it's a huge decision with a lot at stake. Noland himself said, I'm a quadriplegic and all I really have is my brain. So letting someone go in there and mess around, it's a big commitment. If something goes wrong, that's kind of it for me. But I knew I wanted to help out, and I didn't want to let my fears get in the way of that. The second thing that gave me pause was that I didn't know if I wanted to be the first one to get this in my brain if anything would go wrong with the implant. What if it breaks or stops working, and I only have it for a day, a week? I thought maybe someone else should get it first, and I'll get the better version of it. Check this graph out from Neuralink's blog, the daily peak performance in bits per second, BPS. It is clear that Nolan's BCI performance dropped in March and again picked up in April. 
It showed that Neuralink knew about the threat issue back in March, just a couple of weeks before they paraded Nolan around on social media. Instead of taking a step back and figuring out what was going on, they decided to make a PR stunt out of it. Now, I get it, companies like to show off the first person to try their new product. But this is different, this is a medical device that's still being tested, and they knew there was a potential problem. So why didn't the FDA step in and say, hey, hold on a minute, this isn't right? The FDA has rules against promoting experimental medical devices, but it seems like Neuralink might be skating around those rules. It makes you wonder if the FDA's guidelines are even relevant anymore with social media and all. As per the FDA's IDE guidelines, section 812.7, prohibition of promotion and other practices, a sponsor, investigator, or any person acting for or on behalf of a sponsor or investigator shall not promote or test market an investigational device until after FDA has approved the device for commercial distribution. It's kind of like the FDA is stuck in the past, before social media was a thing, before Elon Musk was a household name and definitely before he owned a major platform like Twitter. It's not really their fault for not expecting this kind of situation. But now it's happened, and it's happening again and again. So are those FDA rules just a suggestion at this point? Of course, the bigwigs at the FDA aren't allowed to say anything about it publicly, but it makes you wonder, are they going to update their policies to keep up with the times? How are they going to enforce these rules when it comes to guys like Musk? It's something we'll just have to wait and see. Noland has been super open about wanting to help advance this technology, and it seems like Neuralink has been really supportive of him and his family. But being both the poster child for this experiment and a participant in a medical trial has got to be a ton of pressure. The patient agree that getting the word out about brain implants is important, especially to combat all those crazy sci-fi mind control fears. But safety has to come first. So here's a question that needs to be answered. Where do we draw the line between promoting a medical device that's still being tested and simply trying to recruit people for trials? Is it okay to use websites and social media for this? Especially when the lines are so blurry, like in Neuralink's case. Neuralink's got over a thousand people signed up for their trials, and now they're expanding to Canada and the UK. Nolan's face is plastered all over their website, like their unofficial spokesperson. He seems okay with it, but you gotta wonder if it's a bit much to ask of someone who's already part of this experiment. And it's not just Neuralink doing this. Brain implants are already a big deal in the public eye, and other companies are starting to use patient stories to promote their own trials. Synchron, another company working on brain implants, has been sharing their patients' experiences on TV and social media, but they're not making them the face of the company like Neuralink is doing with Noland. Every company developing brain implants will need to find patients for their trials and build trust with the public. But it's a tricky balance. It's easy to get caught up in the hype, but we gotta remember, brain implants aren't just a fad. These are medical devices that are supposed to be in people's bodies for a long time. That means there are a lot of ethical questions that need to be answered. What happens to the patients after the trials are over? Who's responsible for their care? How are we going to pay for all of this? Luckily, patient groups will be involved in the FDA's discussions about brain implants. They'll be able to speak up for patients and make sure companies aren't just thinking about profits. It'll be up to them to find a balance between making these devices available to people who need them and making sure they're safe and effective. It's a big job, but it's a crucial one. When the big players stay silent, you know something's up. That's when the whispers start, the theories fly, and people like Noland end up in the spotlight. The folks in the brain implant world are trying to figure out how to talk about all this complicated stuff with the public and the media. It's a tricky situation, but honestly, I think it's a good thing that all this is coming out. First off, Nolan's doing fine. Even with the implant hiccup, it's working well. And Neuralink stepped up to fix things. It's great to see him staying positive through all this craziness. I hope he takes care of himself and doesn't get too caught up in the media circus. Second, the fact that we're even having this conversation is huge. It means people are paying attention, asking questions, and demanding better from companies like Neuralink. Hopefully everyone involved learns a thing or two from this, even if they won't admit it publicly. This is good news for the whole industry. It's a reminder that safety has to be the top priority, even if it means slowing down. It also shows that we need more companies in this space so patients have options. And for investors, this is proof that brain implants are a serious thing, even if they're not making money yet. As for Neuralink, it looks like they've learned something and made some changes. 
Fingers crossed that they don't run into any more issues with their patients. But even if they do, we'll be watching.